In this episode, I talk to you guys about how to fix cracking and popping in your knees whenever you squat. Get up and get down, get up and get down. I want you to have the capability to fully move the way your body was designed to, right? Jump of the head, I'll take you back to where my problems lie. In trouble, young adult, I've done some that made my mama cry. Out to the heavens like I bless him for I know he's lost. Caught in a trance and this manic depression settled in. Living in the fantasy world. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Anna Horshik from Squat University, and this is episode seven of the Ask Squat You Show. I hope you guys are having a great week so far. Before we get into the show, I just want to give a huge heartfelt thank you to every single one of you guys who have been watching these Ask Squat You Shows the past couple weeks and sharing them with your friends. It truly means the world to me, and I hope you're enjoying the content and you're using it to empower yourselves to find your true strength and rid your body of aches and pains. All right, it's time for the show. Let's get into today's question. Jay Voltaire 10 writes, please talk about knee popping during squats or even just regular body squats and what to do, Squat University. All right, so the topic is sounds that your knees make whenever you're squatting. Now, there can be a couple different things that cause this. The first is going to be an improper warm up that really leads to some popping noises, almost sounds like your knees are full of popcorn. The second is going to be more of a grinding sensation that's accompanied with pain and swelling. So each of those things are going to have two different solutions to really solving the problem and helping you squat pain free and without that noise in your knee. Now let's talk about the first one. I find a lot of times that popcorn noise in your knee when you're first warming up or maybe going through your first couple sets, a lot of times can be attributed to stiffness in your quads, those tissues, uh, fascia and muscle that can become stiff and bogged down and really cause that kneecap to track weird and cause some of that noise. So what I find that prevents that and decreases that noise is a good mobility warm up consisting of a foam rolling, purposeful stretching, and some good adequate functional mobility warm up with goblet squats. So I'm going to show you all three of those today and we'll go from there. All right, so the first area of your mobility work is going to be purposeful foam rolling. Um, you can even use a lacrosse ball to really get into some hard to reach areas. What we want to do is be able to improve the tissue elasticity, the ability for those tissues to move over one another. If you've been sitting or standing all day, these tissues can really get bogged down and stiff and really limit your body to move freely, which is going to cause, again, some of that cracking and popping noise. So you're going to be laying on your quad like this. You can wrap that other leg over on top and you're going to move nice and slowly up and down the entire length of the muscle. Go close to the kneecap, don't go over it and you're gonna find some stiff spots. And whenever you find a spot, I want you to sit on it for a couple seconds. You can then work it deeper into the tissue. You then can wrap that leg up and down over the top, sort of tack it and stretch it up and down. This is sort of like an ART, active release technique. You can move on the inside, on the outside. Again, we're looking for stiff spots in the tissues. I also like to use a lacrosse ball at times uh, to really work into that quad tendon. It's gonna be right above the kneecap. Again, same thing, you're gonna roll up and down around that area. Sometimes the little cross ball, because of the smaller surface area, can allow you to get in and work a little bit more into those tissues and create a little bit more mobility, a little bit more give to those tissues. From here, same thing, we can flex up and down a couple times and back. So we wanna do about one to two minutes of mobility work across the entire length of that quad. And you're gonna notice already a pretty significant decrease in the amount of popping if right afterwards you check your squat and see how does that feel. So always check and then recheck after every mobility work that you do to really see if it's effective for your body. So step two for fixing some of that popcorn noise in your knee is going to be purposeful stretching. And I love to use the couch stretch. I first saw this from Kelly Starrett of Mobility One. You're just gonna find something. This is a bench here today that we're gonna use. We're going to get down like this. And from here, you're just going to pull back until you feel a great stretch in your quad. Now, for some people, if this is irritating in your knee, you can also push your hips forward. Also, don't jam back like this and put yourself into a huge anterior pelvic tilt because you can create a lot of problems in your anterior hip. So from here, we're just pushing forward or pulling back until you feel a great stretch in that quad. I recommend, especially prior to your workout, doing this up to about 30 seconds. If you remember from our previous videos, long duration stretches upwards of a minute or more can actually decrease the potential for you to create strength and power in those muscles during your workout. So prior to your workout, we wanna stretch most of the time with those short duration stretches anywhere up to 30 seconds. For something like that, I would do probably three on each side. Again, recheck your squat and see if you hear any of that popping like you did before. So once we've done our foam rolling and our stretching, we then need to acclimate our body 
into the bottom of the deep squat with some good stretching functionally. Now, what I like to do is either use a plate or a kettlebell at first, especially if I am dealing with someone who has poor ankle mobility. You're just gonna grab that plate, set your feet, sit down into the bottom of a deep squat. Now, using this weight is going to allow you to offset your body weight if you have poor ankle mobility or balance at first, to really sit and feel the stretch. I want you to sit down here for about 30 seconds to a full minute. Again, while you're down here, you can move side to side a little bit, you can squeeze your glutes, basically acclimate your body to getting used to sitting in this deep position. Now, our end goal is to be able to eventually drop the weight and still maintain that good squat. Now, for some of you, you may have just fallen back on your butt. What I want you to really focus on doing is improving your ankle mobility so that you have the end position to be able to do this for 30 seconds to a minute with no problem at all. Now, once you've sat down here, you've gotten your body used to being here, squeeze your glutes, stand back up. So combined foam rolling, stretching, and deep squatting prior to your workout for many people is going to be a huge factor in decreasing that poppy sort of popcorn noise in your knee. However, for some people, you're still going to have a lot of that popping, but it's more of a grinding sensation under your kneecap. This is a little bit different, and this is actually what we would consider a form of patellofemoral pain. It's actually an injury because it's often associated with pain and even some swelling in the joint. Let's talk about what that is, and if you have that, what you can do to decrease the pain, decrease that grinding sensation, and get back to 100%. A lot of times what you may have is called lateral compressive syndrome, and this is a form of patellofemoral pain. When you look at your knee, basically your kneecap tracks up and down what we call a femoral groove. Think about it like a train moving up and down a train track. Now, when your muscles on the outside and the inside part of your leg are working in sync as they should, and they have a relative amount of stiffness in each one of them, you're going to get that knee to move up and down as it should. However, if you have tissues on the outside part of your leg, this is your vastus lateralis, your lateral quad, your IT band, or your lateral retinaculum, which are the tissues right on the outside part of your kneecap. If they're excessively stiff, all of a sudden, that kneecap, your patella, is gonna be pulled and tilted more to the outside than it is on the inside. So basically, the train is getting pulled one way on the train track. Now, eventually, through many repetitions of squatting, you're gonna get that excessive lateral pull and tilt is gonna cause uneven wearing away of the underside of the kneecap. So that's where that grinding sensation comes in. Eventually, this can cause sort of a wearing away of the smooth underside of your kneecap called chondromalacia. Now, the big thing that we need to understand is how do we fix this? Well. Whenever we have the stiffness on this side, it can also cause excessive stretch, and because of the pain that also ensues in some of the swelling with this injury, it can also cause this muscle, the VMO, vastus medialis oblique muscle, to shut down. So our game plan has to be to improve the elasticity, the ability for these muscles to move as they should to sort of shut down some of that stiffness, and we also have to be able to improve the firing of these muscles on the inside of the leg. So let's talk about the first one, which is going to be how to improve the mobility of those excessively stiff tissues on the lateral side of the leg. Now the one thing you can do at home is work a lacrosse ball right into the outside part of the kneecap. Don't actually go on the kneecap, but all those tissues that surround the outside of the kneecap, you can work on those to improve their mobility, which can help decrease some of that tension on the kneecap and allow it to track a little bit better. So you're just going to lay down, let's do this on my left side. You're going to put it right on the outside part of that kneecap, and you're just going to roll. Again, we're searching for stiff spots just like we were before, and we're tacking them down. We can move the knee up and down, but really try to search out some of those stiff and painful spots and work into them. Now, again, we want to do about a minute to two minutes and really affect some change in those stiff tissues. Now, in some more severe cases where you can't get enough improvement in the mobility, a lot of times people will go to a physical therapist and work on the actual mobility of those lateral tissues with some manual techniques. Now, these are called patellar mobilizations. I wouldn't do these at home, but I wanna show you what a physical therapist would do. Now, when you look at your kneecap, if your knee is completely relaxed, relax your quad, that kneecap should be able to move around a centimeter to the left and right. Now, when you have excessive lateral compressive syndrome, your kneecap cannot move 
excessively one way versus the other because it's already pulled over one way. So one thing a physical therapist would do would be to work their hands on one side and would do mobilizations to help stretch out some of those excessively stiff tissues on the inside. Now this is something, again, I wouldn't do this on your own, but I wanted to show you what it would look like. So you would have a physical therapist come over and they would be working the kneecap to the medial side to help stretch out some of those stiff tissues. Now, once you've taken away some of that stiffness in the lateral portion of your leg, we then need to clear up some of those muscular imbalances that can occur due to the swelling and constant tension on these tissues right there. A lot of times what you'll find is your VMO muscle will be inhibited and won't actually fire well. So what we need to do is get it to turn back on. Now a lot of people originally thought we could target the VMO with certain exercises. However, what we found is that you can't actually specifically target the VMO alone with any quad exercises. When your quads contract, they all contract together. You can't actually target and isolate one specific part of the quads at all with any quad exercises. So it then comes down to choosing the right strengthening exercises to really get over that grinding sensation that you had before. What we don't really want to do are motions like seated knee extensions. What that does is by contracting up, you're getting a ton of quadriceps force. However, if you've got that compression syndrome, that grinding sensation under the knee, you're actually, because of the quad force and the way the kneecap is being pulled, putting a ton of force and compression at a very small point underneath your kneecap, which can actually make symptoms worse. What we want to do is stick with a lot of what we call closed chain exercises. These are the ones where your feet are in contact with the ground, like a squat. Now, originally you want your squats with this compressive syndrome to be fairly small. We call these mini squats. And what that's gonna do is allow you to strengthen your quads without putting too much compressive force into your knee. So originally, these are gonna be body weight squats and you're just gonna be squatting down and back up. Again, learning to load the hips first and then back up. Now, we don't want to do very deep squats when you're having this grinding, painful sensation early on because the deep squat is going to put a lot of compressive forces under that knee. So no matter how much uh, work you're doing to fix the lateral tension on those tissues, the deep, deep squat will always put too much pressure on that and can just make symptoms worse. Now, if you're having this lateral compressive syndrome and you're having pain, I highly suggest you talk to a medical practitioner like a physical therapist. Don't continue to push into pain. Pain is like the warning light in your body's car. Now, whenever you're driving your car and your warning light pops on, it's a signal telling you there's something going wrong. If you continue to drive your car to the max, basically working out with pain, eventually something's gonna go bad and you're gonna be in even worse shape than you first started. So if you're having pain in your knee, try some of these things, talking about some of the mobility work, some light strengthening, but in the end, if it's continuing to linger, I would definitely talk to a medical practitioner like a physical therapist so that you can really fix the problem and get back to 100%. So there you go. I hope you guys have a better understanding of how to deal with any of that cracking or popping noise you may have in your knee. Question of the daytime, what is your go-to pre-workout meal? Usually I just go with a piece of fruit, maybe some peanut butter and a couple glasses of water so I'm fully hydrated. So I wanna know what yours is in the comment section below. I hope you guys are enjoying these Ask Why You shows. If you do enjoy them, please subscribe to the channel and save it with your friends. Until next time, everyone, happy squatting. Hometown hero on the road doing shows and sold out arenas. You can call me what you want, but you won't ever slow my dreams up. This is the vision of a dreamer. I seem to...